This is 2016 USA TSTST problem number two and here is a view of this problem. Uh, we're given a triangle ABC, a scaling triangle with ortho center H, you can clearly see it marked on our picture, and circumcenter O, O is also clearly marked on the picture. Let M and N be the midpoints of AH, M is here, and the midpoint of BC is N. Uh, we suppose that the circle gamma with diameter AH, the circle with diameter AH is that purple circle, so uh, this is our circle gamma, and it's clear that diameter AH, midpoint M, so that's a circle centered at M, and uh, because diameter is H, AH, and this is 90 degrees, and the foot of the altitude, this foot of the altitude is also 90 degrees, it suggests that E and F are on that circle as well. I hope that's clear, right? So let's make note of that. E, F are on that circle gamma, uh, whose diameter is A, H, obviously. Now, that circle gamma intersects A, B, C at G, and you can clearly see it marked here as G. Uh, we're further told that um, the tangent to gamma again, that purple circle, at G meets O, M at P. So O, o M... Uh, is I, I try to draw it here you can see it on my picture um, and then um, the tangent at G they meet at P okay fine but as I did draw that I added this dashed line AP just to remind us that because OM is a line going through the center of that purple circle gamma um, there is some symmetry here in this picture and G is the tangent at G here is symmetric with respect to the tangent at A. Does that make sense? Again, to that purple circle, tangent at A also meet at P. So this is directly followed from um, the angle bisector thingy. Okay, there you go. Uh, I'm not sure if that thing will be useful, but I wanted to add it regardless so that it gives us some idea. Okay, so finally, we need to show that the circumcircles of G and Q, something that I didn't draw in this picture, because anytime I did draw, I'm not sure where it intersect that uh, red circle, BMC, which is that one, and the green circle, DEF, which is the nine-point circle. So, because the points are so close to each other, I have a um, gut feeling that uh, G and Q will go through T, but it's not certain yet. So for the time being, we are uh, we know that um, a DEF, the nine-point circle, and MBC they intersect at M and T. So let's write that down. So let DEF let DEF intersection MBC MBC be um well we already know they uh, intersect at m obviously because the nine point circle goes through the midpoint of ah obviously so they already go through m but i claim they uh, the so let's when i say i claim let's say that they also intersect at this point t prime now t prime the moment i use the, the t prime as a notation so let me change it so i'm kind of using phantom points here right so i need to show that t prime is in fact identical to t so that's kind of uh, my claim, but it will take us some, some time to, to reach there. So for the time being, let's just write it like M uh, T prime. Um, so I mentioned O M P R collinear. So clearly, let me just uh, make note of, of that. O M P uh, collinear, um, which implied also that A P tangent, um, to gamma, obviously. Okay, um, and this is purely by uh, symmetry, like I mentioned. Uh, there's, uh, I think, another point that I. Uh, well, okay, so we we can um, we can figure it in a minute. Okay, so let's now uh, do some business here. Uh, so first of all, um, when um, let's see, a h is a diameter. So therefore, if I connect, um, say a g. And I connect uh, GH because it subtends the uh, the diameter AH. This is 90 degrees for sure. So angle AGH, AGH is equal to 90 degrees. But when you um, 
you uh, let's see let's see let's see uh, yeah so um, you can also clearly see that uh, because it's 90 degrees and this time if you so AGH is 90 degrees but at the same time if you focus on the circumcircle of ABC let's say that the point diametrically opposite A is that point uh, say L it is clear that um, AGL because it's AGL must be 90 degrees right so but uh, AGH is 90 degrees so therefore uh, so I don't know if it goes through N, but I know for sure that G, H, L are collinear, right? Uh, where L is uh, is defined as such. So A, G, H is 90 degrees and angle uh, A, G, L is also 90 degrees for sure. Recall that L is defined as the point diametrically opposite A, right? So, so therefore what I mean is uh, if I connect A, L it would go through O which is the circumcenter of ABC so let's uh, revise this thing okay so so far we are doing pretty good on this monster problem uh, the one thing that I need to quickly clarify is the point N is is GHL which I already know are collinear do they go through and that would be a, a really nice thing well I claim they do and uh, the reason is uh, you can just focus your attention on the uh, homotety uh, center that H taking the nine point circle to the circumcircle. So let uh, homotety uh, um, H uh, taking a triangle DEF uh, to tr uh, triangle ABC. Now, when you focus on this, it's clear that H will take M to A. And further, it will take the diameters to the diameters. So uh, H will take the diameter MN to the diameter AL, right? Hey, that implies that H will take uh, what point to L? Well, it's obvious that, uh, that, that the point N is... Um, has got to be taken to L, right? Because we already know A, M is taken to L, A, and therefore N has got to be taken to L. That's that's it. So therefore from here, uh, because it's a homotety, this implies that uh, H and L are collinear, but now we can combine everything. So therefore G, H, N, L collinear. That's pretty good. These are all preliminary uh, steps. Uh, we're still circling around uh, the, the thing. Uh, we're just trying to getting used to the picture, basically. Okay. Um, another observation. By definition, Q is on AN. Uh, and it's on the intersection of AN uh, with uh, the circumcircle of AFE. Does that make sense? So suppose the circle gamma with diameter AH, this is our purple circle, meets the circumcircle of ABC at G and it meets the line AN at Q. Okay, so because, um, so what, what I have in mind is uh, if I connect HQ here, because uh, AH is diameter, obviously AQH would be 90 degrees as well as HQN is also 90 degrees. This is a 90 degree angle, right? Um, so let's um, also, let's write that down, uh, angle HQA, angle HQA is equal to 90 degrees, something that will be uh, super useful in a few minutes. Um, finally, uh, I want you to have a look at, uh, let's do this, let's extend AG and let's extend BC. So let's call this common intersection point as R. Okay, I did, huh? Let's take note of that. Uh, extend uh, AG and BC. And this is exactly uh, how we got the point R. So that's the point R. Okay, if you focus your attention on triangle ARN, uh, we already know NG is an altitude as well as AD is another altitude so therefore the final altitude should go through so H is ortho center so therefore uh, H 
ortho center so that's huge h ortho center of uh, triangle arn i hope it's clear why is that again because gn is perpendicular ad is perpendicular so th therefore h is the ortho center but hq is 90 degrees suggesting that so this implies that qhr is also uh, collinear does that make sense so therefore yes so that shows that h q are collinear that's pretty good so far so so far we have gotten that ag hq and uh, say uh, bc they meet at r okay so um one more thing um let's see um that also gives us the idea uh, that if you focus now your attention on this uh, triangle g and q so the circumcircle of g and q um will go through what hey that's going through q that's going through g that that, that there's only one x and, and and as well there's only one circle which does that it is the circle with diameter r n right does that make sense because we have 90 degree angles so because r g n and r q n are 90 degrees it tells us that r g q n is cyclic okay so let's make note of that as well before we start our final thing so uh obvious so also um angle uh, r g n r g n is equal to 90 degrees which is equal to angle r q n r q n implying that uh, r g q n cyclic okay so that's huge because r g q n that's our circle of interest right so now the, the still i don't know where these two intersect uh, g n q and m b c i'm i have a pretty good feeling they will intersect at that point t prime which is defined as the intersection of d e f and m b c right but for the time being i can just go ahead and draw the uh, picture uh, so for instance if i use this color here I have this very nice circle, which I'm not very sure if it goes through to T prime. So that's why I will skip that step. Uh, and then I know it goes through Q and I know it goes through N. Does that make sense? And then you can complete the circle if you want to. Uh, let's just move that R right here. That has been amazing so far now the quality uh, part so now we, we it's time to go further okay so so far like i said ag uh hq and bc they all meet at r i claim there is at least two more lines that will go through r so let's start with the first one so i will be making use of radical axes so let's open some space here so i will be using the radical axes of uh, triangle ABC AFE so let's write that down uh, radical so or I can directly say radical center and I will let you confirm that the radical center of ABC uh, AFE and uh, BFEC oops and BFEC um, BFEC is that uh, dashed line, uh, orange line. So the, the radical center of these circles uh, is um, is what is R again. Hey, the implication uh, comes directly from, for instance, if you consider the radical axis of ABC and AFE. So ABC we know the circumcircle, the big circumcircle. AFE is uh, that purple circle. So black circle, purple circle. That's AG. And if you focus, for instance, on uh, a, um, ABC and um, so these two, ABC and BFEC, again, the black circumcircle and the dashed circle, orange circle, that one is BC for sure. So these are the radical uh, axes, so intersection. Finally, this one and this one. AFE, the purple circle, and BFEC, the dashed orange circle, that one is EF. Aha! So this intersection is R, suggesting that EF is also. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, draw this. Uh, I'll use the blue color. So not only... So this is the fourth line that goes through r obviously right does that make sense okay so so far we are doing very good so we know that ag ef 
HQ and BC, they all meet at R, which is uh, kind of an, on the circle G, uh, Q, N, right? And with diameter R, N, obviously. Now, finally, I have one more claim. I claim that MT prime also go through R. And for that, you can just check the radical center um, of uh, this time the circles. Um, have a look at, for instance, uh, ABC, uh, DEF, or uh, let, let me do it like this, DEF, and finally, uh, um, I think BMC should do it. Okay, so let's quickly check. And again, the radical uh, center for this uh, for is R again. So that's pretty cool. And the reason it's R is clear, right? So in the previous exposition, we, we had AG and BC at R already. We knew it. So therefore, it forced EF to go through R as well. So check this out. So ABC and BMC, well, obviously, BC is the radical uh, axis. Now, ABC and DEF. Now, this one is curious. Uh, Obviously, because these two circles, they do not intersect the green circle of DEF, the nine point circle and the black big circle of ABC, they do not intersect. However, uh, I know for sure that the power of R with respect to the points E and F and B and C are equal. The reason is that BFEC is cyclic, that orange dashed circle. As a result, RF times RE is equal to RB times RC. So wherever the radical axis of these uh, two uh, circles of DEF and ABC is, it has to, it has to go through R, right? Indeed, I can say further, uh, I already know that it has to be perpendicular to OH as well, but that's irrelevant. So uh, the radical axis of ABC and DEF goes through R, goes through R. And finally, um, I can check uh, these two, DEF and BMC now. DEF and BMC, they intersect at M and T prime, right? So M T prime is this one. And now when I look into it, uh, so ABC and DEF align going through R and BC is another line which goes through R. So therefore, it suggests that the radical axis, the first and the third results, suggest that the radical axis has got to be, the radical center has got to be the point R, implying that MT prime is also going through that point. So let's go ahead and draw that one as well. Okay. Whew, so we had the fifth line as well. So therefore, so let's summarize so far what we've got. So, so far we got that AG, uh, M T prime or T prime M, let's say, uh, E F, uh, H Q, and uh, B C concur at at R. That's amazing. So that's a pretty good result as it is right now. Um, so let's uh, finally establish that the circum uh, circle of R G Q N it goes through the point T prime. Well, I, I can do it in uh, multiple ways. Uh, for instance, one way to notice that is to observe M T prime N. So angle, so recall that recall uh, angle M T prime N is equal to 90 degrees. Why? Because M N is the diameter of that nine point circle. It's, it's a very well known fact. Um, um, and um, let's see. So this thing would imply that uh, R um, R T prime N is also ninety degrees because M T prime R is collinear. We just established it a, a few minutes ago. So therefore, R T prime N is ninety degrees. R T prime N is ninety degrees. Therefore, boom, establishing the result that indeed uh, T prime is on circum. Uh, circle of GQN, GQN. But now this is amazing. This would further imply that T prime is indeed congruent to T. So I no longer need to put a prime. All I do is I make sure that circle goes through it. So I extended that circle to make sure that it goes through that point T. Whew, so we are uh, pretty much uh, close to the end. Now the final step. Uh, so remember the question was asking to show T is on PN. 
in our, I already have established that angle MTN is 90 degrees. So all I need is to establish that angle MTP is also 90 degrees. Okay, does that make sense? So that would show that PTN is collinear. So therefore, all I need is, uh, let's uh, put a line here. All I need to finish is uh, to show that angle uh, PTM, I no longer need to put a prime for the P, is 90 degrees. Uh, since uh, combining with combine with uh, MTM, MTN, sorry, PTM, MTN, uh, M angle MTN being equal to 90 degrees will combined uh, will imply that PTN is collinear. PTN collinear. Okay, so uh, so therefore, why would PTM be 90 degrees? Uh, one way to finish is again using radical axes and focus on the radical center of three circles. Let me go ahead and uh, establish that one more circle. This time the circumcircle of PGMA. So this is a circle, cyclic quadrilateral PGMA. The reason is that um, we, we know that G at G and at A we have tangents. So therefore PGM. The angle PGM is 90 degrees, as is PAM. So these two angles are 90 degrees. Let me go ahead and uh, draw this one too. That one is also 90 degrees, suggesting that the PM is diameter of PGAM. Let's write that down. PM diameter uh, of uh, circle PGMA. And now this gives us an idea of applying radical axes radical uh, center i should probably say radical center of now consider these triangles pgma uh try uh, circle sorry def the nine point circle and finally uh aef now let's see uh, the radical uh, axes first so what is the radical axis of the last two, for example, let's go ahead and uh, use a different color. Maybe I should use the blue, uh, red color. So, D E and A E D E F, the red, the, the green circle, the nine point circle, and A E F. A E F is the purple circle. Obviously, this one is E F. This is the radical axis. And in a similar way, P G M A and A E F, the first and the third. So, P G M A and uh, A E F. Uh, a, E, F, obviously they intersect at A and G, that would imply that A, G is, um, is the radical axis. Lastly, we need the radical axis of P, G, M, A and D, E, F. Well, uh, obviously these two, um, they share the point M first of all, but they need to have another point. Now, notice that EF, the radical ax, uh, axes EF and AG, they meet, already we know they meet at R. That forces the last one to go through R as well. But there's only really one point, one candidate for this, and this is the point T prime. So this is really the radical axis of PGMA and DEF has got to be MT prime. And the reason is clear, uh, because um, the intersection of DEF and uh, the line uh, MT prime is T prime, right? So there's really no other point that that can be a candidate. So therefore, PGMA has got to pass through the point T prime as well. Does that make sense? So uh, so the radical center is uh, R, implying that uh, PGMA has got to go through that point uh, T as well. And now that completes. Uh, our uh, solution because PM we declared early on that it was uh, a diameter, right? So PM is a diameter, and as a result, angle PT prime M itself would overseeing the diameter would be 90 degrees. But remember, this was our goal to show that PTM is 90 degrees. Combining it with MTN being 90 degrees because MN is the diameter that establishes that PTN are collinear and this solves this beautiful uh, problem.